Hi, welcome back to Tech Ventures. My name is Lizina, and I'm a technical marketing engineer at Future Electronics. If you're interested in checking out any previous episodes, then please click the link on the screen or check out the description box below. For today's episode, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm so excited to be able to welcome Mohamed Afani as a special guest. Mohamed is the founder of Novel Bits, a professional training resource for Bluetooth low energy development. He's the subject matter expert who helps companies connect their products with Bluetooth low energy and brings them to market faster. You may also recognize his name from helpful tutorials and articles found on the Bluetooth SIG website. Welcome, Mohamed. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Lazina. I appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity. The pleasure is all mine. Bluetooth isn't a term that's new to us in the IoT world, uh, but it seems that it's still a relevant term today. Why was there a buzz at CES 2024? Yeah, so I mean, at CES, there was a lot of the normal, uh, what you would expect in the IoT space from connected uh, devices, such as in the health uh, fit and fitness market, as well as uh, smart home and industrial. Um, however, really, I think the, the area where L Bluetooth was really shining in that space is the new LE audio standard, which is the next generation of Bluetooth audio. Audio and Bluetooth are not two strange words to put uh, side by side. In fact, Bluetooth Classic's main use case is still audio. So how does LE Audio differ from Bluetooth Classic? Yeah, so LE Audio is really an improvement over Classic, but not only to fix some of the limitations and the drawbacks of Classic, but it also introduces a lot of new features and uh, new use cases that were not possible with Bluetooth before. And specifically uh, is standardizing the Bluetooth standard for, uh, for audio for the hearing aid industry and as well as in broadcast use cases. I imagine there's something to do with power efficiencies as well? Yeah, absolutely. So Bluetooth or LE Audio introduced a new codec called the LC3 codec, and it's a lot more efficient. It actually produces, allows, um, your production of audio at a higher quality at a lower rate than the codec that was used in Bluetooth Classic, the mandated codec. And LC3 is the primary codec that is used or it's the standard codec that is required to be used with LE Audio. So that is providing a lot more efficiency into the standard. And because it's obviously from for a hearing aid kind of uh, use case, it was very critical to get that thing, uh, that part right with uh, Bluetooth. Yeah, I imagine um, it wouldn't be fun to ha keep having to constantly recharge your devices. Um, yeah. Absolutely. So does, yeah, does, so does that mean that Bluetooth Classic will be an obsolete technology when mm -hmm. LE audio will be widely adopted? What is or has pre prevented LE audio from being rapidly adopted today by manufacturers? And what are the complexities that made this impossible before and now? Yeah, so I, I wouldn't say that classic audio is going away anytime soon. I mean, definitely over the long term, and I would say at least, uh, I don't know, seven to 10 years or so, you'll start seeing that LE audio will become the more dominant standard. But keep in mind that there are industries that are very slow to adapt and adopt new technologies, such as in automotive and other more regulated industries. So it's hard to adopt these new standards very easily. Um, another important thing is that LE audio is a whole beast. I mean, it's, uh, it's not just a new feature of Bluetooth. It really introduces a lot more into the standard. So there are, in fact, t over 22 profile specifications, just 22. specifically for LE audio. Wow. Yes, 22 specifications. That's for LE audio on top of uh, low energy. So Bluetooth low energy still has the core spec, which is over 3,100 pages. And you still need to understand that and then go understand all the profile uh, specifications that are specifically for LE audio. So you can imagine that's going to take a while until yeah. devices start to uh, or manufacturers start to adopt this new standard, especially for a lot more innovative use cases. Um, but there's also, I think there's going to be a transitionary period where you'll see classic and LE audio coexist and dual mode chipsets on the market. Uh, in the meantime, until LE Audio becomes like the de facto standard. Oh, for sure. Now, just for comparison purposes, from if there was 22 profiles now that's been introduced for LE Audio, for class, Bluetooth Classic, it was just one, right? It was 
the entire spec related to audio. Yeah, so the the you know the core specification is shared between classic and low energy, mm -hmm. but there you have profiles on top of uh, Bluetooth the core specification. So for Bluetooth Classic, there were just a few profiles really. If you think about it, it's the I think the headset right. profile, um, and there's the A2DP, which is for stereo right. streaming, stereo audio. Uh, so hands-free profile is the first one, not yeah. headset. Um, so there's only a couple, a few profiles on top and they were very rigid, very uh, monolithic. Uh, so it wasn't easy to adapt them to different use cases. So that's why LE Audio becomes more of a flexible standard that allows you to create a lot more, uh, you know, flexible use cases for your own application. Um, so when do you predict LE Audio will be 100% adopted? Yeah, so I, I mean, in the news ca use cases that, you know, Classic were, was never uh, able to provide, I would see LE Audio in the next couple of years. Uh, so speci especially broadcast with Auracast, that's a new trademark that's owned by the Bluetooth SIG. It's meant to convey support, uh, standardized support for broadcast use case of Bluetooth, uh, of Bluetooth audio, which uses LE Audio. And so I see that coming very soon. I mean, we're already seeing a lot of headset manufacturers as well as uh, handset manufacturers uh, in introduce LE audio support into their smartphones as well as earbuds and uh, wireless speakers. So that's becoming adopting, you know, adopted very quickly. There are, again, some industries that it will take much longer, such as an automotive. I don't know when you would expect a car to have LE audio supported in its infotainment system, even to replace classic. So it, it will take a while, I would say a few years before we really start seeing 100% adoption. Yeah, I meant to ask you about Auracast. It's a, another word that I've been seeing a lot at um, CES 2024. Yeah. It seems like it's a pretty big word to know in terms of Bluetooth, low energy um, audio development. So thank you for explaining that. Um, now I have some questions. So currently for classic Bluetooth turnkey audio solutions, those are more readily available because they've been around for a long time, right? And we can see that through IC and module vendors that fully integrate all the hardware and um, software that's needed to build the microphones, the headphones, um, and other devices that you just mentioned. But are there any full turnkey solutions from a single IC or module uh, partner that supports these vertical LE audio markets? And if not, do you think there will be at some point? Yeah, we, we're seeing new ones come out every single day. I mean, uh, NXP uh, semiconductors, uh, Nordic semiconductor, they all have turnkey solutions for LE audio. Uh, you have the uh, dual, you know, Windows laptops are already supporting LE audio nowadays with newer versions of Windows. So you, I mean, we're, we're seeing this being mm -hmm. adapted and adopted um, very quickly, very rapidly in the market. So I, I expect that there will be even more and more development kits and uh, turnkey solutions available from different vendors uh, in the near term. That's so exciting. Um, yeah. Which new Bluetooth trends do you anticipate seeing in 2024 and beyond? So I think LE Audio is one of the main ones. Uh, there are yeah. still additional features uh, from Bluetooth that are coming up in newer versions. Uh, now. You know, the Bluetooth SIG is, uh, you know, you have to be um, an associate member or higher in order to get access to the specifications when they're in draft mode or the early, early draft mode and to participate in working groups to know what's going on behind the scenes and coming up in newer versions. However, the Bluetooth SIG in recent years have been, uh, they've been more public about some of the new features that are coming out. So some of the new ones that are really exciting uh, is uh, channel sounding, which is for use for high accuracy distance measurement. So similar to something like ranging that is uh, UWB is used okay. for. Uh, others are higher bands going into like five and six gigahertz. There's also talk about higher data throughput. So going beyond the two meg, uh, meg, meg five that we have currently. Mm -hmm. So these are at least some of the new uh, features that are coming out in new ver in uh, future versions of Bluetooth that I think are pretty exciting. Yeah, it's pretty uh, exciting to see how a technology that is yeah currently in existence, but it, it just gets better and better as the, as time goes on. So it's exciting to see what kind of advancements that we can expect and um, become normalized. Yeah, absolutely. 
So if someone is interested in BLE development, Mohammed, audio or um, not audio, what are some resources that can help them get started? Yeah, so I mean, there's there's so many resources out there. So it's uh, it's actually way better than when I started in back in 2014 or so. Uh, there are books it's not out that long there. Ago, so actually, 2014 was not that yeah, long ago. It's, it's 10 years ago, but it's uh, you know, it's Bluetooth Low Energy was introduced in 2010. So it's uh, considering the lifetime of uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, it's uh, it's a long time. Um, so I feel old, <laughs> but <laughs> in, like in terms of resources. The, the ultimate guy, the ultimate reference is always the Bluetooth specification. But if that scares, you know, someone uh, going through a 3000 plus uh, spec, <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna uh, say that. spec uh, <laughs> then there are, there are other books out there. So I've, uh, I've updated my uh, book uh, to the second edition just a few months ago. So that's available. Actually, you can get um, a copy, a hard copy for free, just pay for shipping and handling for my website. There's also in terms of specifically for LE audio, uh, Nick Hun has a great book that's available for free as a PDF download from the Bluetooth SIG website. Uh, you can find a lot of blog posts and articles on the Bluetooth SIG website uh, that are helpful as well for learning. You have vendor support uh, forums that are available. Um, I have my own Bluetooth Developer Academy, which is an online membership for helping people uh, learn about the new technical advances in Bluetooth as well as a private forum. And I do some uh, training as well in person and virtual for different companies. So I think there's no lack of resources these days. So it's uh, yeah. much easier than it was a while ago. And for hardware, of course, there's few, always future electronics whenever you need a development kit or any kind of uh, help, um, we're always here. But I wanted to ask, when do you sleep, Mohammed? It doesn't, it seems like you're so busy all the time. <laughs> yeah, uh, sleep is, uh, you know, overrated, I think. <laughs> as long as, I'm, I'm, I think it's, it's more about uh, the fact that I'm passionate about yes, uh, Bluetooth so. and the work that I do. So it's, sleep doesn't feel like a, an important priority, <laughs> although you have to get some sleep. But yeah. I still enjoy my work, so I, I try to work as much as I can. Well, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for um, taking yeah. the time today to explain to us things to consider when it comes to BL, not BLE, but rather LE audio uh, design considerations. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. It was my pleasure. Thank you.